what's up guys gamer one two two and it's list day ah yes list day and today we're going to look at the top 10 worst cards of 2019. yeah it's that time of year again when everyone's doing yearly recaps so let's jump on that old bandwagon and look at some of the worst cards that came out this year there was like 20 cards that easily could have taken spots on this list and i'm not even positive the order of this list is particularly relevant simply because i tried I tried whittling it down and we, the Discord and I, we, we went back and forth on a bunch of cards. Like, there were some really lousy cards this year. It's probably why we've had like a two years of Sky Striker, because they're not making good cards to replace them. This is why we have Power Creep, people, otherwise the game gets boring. So yeah, uh, these cards are all pretty lousy and, and they're very lousy for disparate reasons. So uh, I think other than like number one, two, and three, you could probably move these around. Without further ado, let's look at some of the worst cards that came out this year. Number 10, The World Legacy. This is a continuous spell card that has the following ability. You can only have one of them on the board, and every time a level 5 or higher monster is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can put a counter on this card. Max 7 counters. You can send this card with its 7 counters to the graveyard to special summon one cyber slink monster from your extra deck. Ugh. First off, it's a do-nothing card. You put it on board, nothing happens, so it's not immediately getting you any kind of advantage. Secondly, 7 monsters of level 5 or higher going from the field to the graveyard is a lot to ask for a free guy. Obviously the idea is this, you're making link plays and you're summoning a bunch of these level five guys or higher and you're sending them from the field of the graveyard to make your link plays and, and all the while accruing uh, counters on the card. I'm not exactly sure what you think you're doing, however, because uh, this is not counting any of your level four or lower monsters, which are probably predominantly the monsters you are link climbing with. So uh, then like link monsters don't count. Like I guess the world legacy deck has those like big Gemini guys or whatever, but I feel like you're not- this is like gonna happen over a couple of turns and I just, I just think that's just really too slow and you would never run it. There's tons of better options that you want to do in an aggressive link climbing deck. Number nine, Soul Levy. Bye bye this here trap car guy. Drove my Chevy to Soul Levy, but Soul Levy is, is bad. You can only control one of these continuous trap cards. Each time your opponent special summons a monster, they send the top three cards of their deck to the graveyard. It's like the most mild floodgate ever. The idea being that uh, you're trying to make your opponent weigh their options when they're going through their link spamming or whatever it is, and uh, slowly milling themselves to death. However, uh, a deck that summons a lot, for instance, I don't know, Orcus, which this would actually get quite a few mills against, would probably thank you for playing it because uh, you're just milling cards to the graveyard, potentially extending their link plays. It'd be very unlikely that your opponent would just kind of uh, keep going until they mill themselves out. They're just going to keep going until you've set their graveyard up for them and then make an unbreakable board and then uh, you would have wished this was literally any other card. In a mill strategy, it's probably the only time you'd ever want to do this, but again, those decks aren't very viable because milling cards off the top of your opponent's deck normally helps them, it does not hurt them. You know what a aggressive go-first deck like Orcus needs? A crappy neg-2 trap card. Orchestrated Release. Orchestrated Release is a trap card with the following effect. Tribute two machine monsters, then target one monster in your graveyard. Special summon it. If your opponent controls a link monster, you can summon two guys instead. Okay, like I said, Orchists, the deck this is like built into, uh, aren't aggressive, go first, make a board deck. A trap card, plays, they do not. So uh, I don't know what this is exactly for. Most machine decks actually seem to be rather aggressive. Uh, but even something like Trains, where you just make like Dora and sit on it, you're still not going to want to do this. It requires a turn to activate, being that it's a trap card, and the fact that like you're tributing two monsters on your board to get one guy back is just really, really strange. Most of the time, those two guys that you have on board, you can probably make an extra deck play with, and that would have been better than sacking them for one random guy in your graveyard. And the fact that you can go at least neg one with it if your opponent is doing something very specific is not a, it's not a benefit that's just uh it's less crappy in a very specific situation and that's kind of dumb number seven is extra ceratops uh the best part about this card is it's goofy artwork it looks like they're filming like the lowest budget 
kaiju movie ever. <laughs> Extra Ceratops is not a dinosaur because it's just a dude in a dinosaur costume. So it's like uh, actually a warrior because warrior is basically just human type in Yu-Gi-Oh. Level one Earth, what do? When a monster in an extra deck zone is destroyed in battle by a monster in a main deck zone and this thing is in your graveyard, you can summon this thing to the field of the owner of the destroyed extra deck monster bizarrely specific summoning condition. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Uh, if you have a guy in your extra deck zone and you need to get an extra guy on board, crashing a guy in battle does not seem to be the best way to get a level one monster on board. Also, you have to get it in your graveyard to begin with. Ugh. And I honestly don't know why you'd ever want to, I don't know, destroy one of your opponent's link monsters in their extra deck zone and then give them a free guy. And all of this for its final effect, if it's summoned this way and it's on the field and it's destroyed, the uh, you get to draw a card. And like, you can't even use this to cycle through your deck because it summons itself in defense position. So you can't be like, crash a bad link monster, summon this thing, crash it, draw a card. It's not even a good play even if you could do that, but you can't, it goes in defense mode. <laughs> Oh, uh, why would you want to do this? I'm honestly trying to think about something for this because it, it seems like one of those cards where it's like, it's not it's not obvious in its function, but there's some cheesy interaction, but I honestly can't think of anything. If you guys can think of something, you know, stick it in the comments. But, but yeah, anyway. Number six is Handy Gallop. Handy Gallop. <laughs> I remember you. Handy Gallop's level one earth beast monster with the following effect. Cannot attack directly. Gain attack equal to the difference in life points between you and opponent. Uh, okay, that could be a pretty big normal summon if one of you is in the very much lead and the other is very much losing. If your life points are the higher of the two, you take any battle damage uh, resulting in battles with this card instead. Oh, kawaii. Another one of those really weird effects, I just can't figure out what you're supposed to do with it. It can't attack directly, so you can't finish a game with it in its most optimal state. Uh, very, very much losing, and you just normal summon it to hit something on your opponent's side of the field. It can't, like, win you a game? By nature of just the life points it will always have will never be enough to to, to punch for, for lethal. Even against, like, a 0-0 a zero, zero monster. Because let's say your opponent has 8,000 life points and you have 100, this thing will have 7,900 attack, and you punch into a 0 attack power monster, you will do 7,900... You will, uh you'll both be at 100 life points. So at best case scenario, this thing will just even the life points out. And then we don't even want to talk about it if you are actually got the more life points, then it's just really bad. I, oh. It would certainly be a cheesy way to get a draw in late game three. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be the stupidest thing in the world? It would be stupid a way of getting over one of those like waking the dragon type monsters where they summoned it out and it's really big and it's not affected by anything and the only way to get over it is by like attacking but it requires your life points to be quite disparate from each other so it's not even like a guarantee sometimes it can be dead some, i don't know it just it's just very lackluster in its one function Number five is Child's Play. Ah yes, the Chucky card. Also in Duel Links. Each time your opponent summons a monster, this continuous spell will give you 300 life points. Monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle if you have over 10,000 life points, which is probably not gonna be too hard to get to. Again, do nothing card. You play it to the field, nothing happens. You would rather it be anything else most of the time. Its best function is late game three. Again, you play it, your opponent mounts any kind of board. If they're playing a deck that special summons at least a couple of times, you are now going to be ahead in life points and you're putting them in a very, very strange scenario because the more they play to be aggressive, the steeper of a life point deficit they need to deal with. I feel like your opponent's just not going to do that. And then like any other time, the card's just really useless and doesn't do you any good. Are you, gonna, are you really going to side this thing? I don't think so. I think it's best use is like an Arrow Mage as just another card to gain life. So yeah, you need a deck that's completely based around gaining life points and there's like one in the game. <laughs> so, and I don't even think they'd play this. But yeah, okay, fine. Um, I'm really trying not to just shit on these cards and actually find some use for them because try not to be too negative, you know? Oh, it's gonna get harder and harder to be positive because these cards are getting harder and harder to find a function for. Fightin' Dirty! Fightin' Dirty is a normal trap card with the following effect. If a card or cards you control and a card or cards your opponent controls are destroyed at the same time by battle or card effect, each player draws two cards. You can only activate one of these per turn. 
this doesn't sound super bad if you literally don't use your brain. But as soon as you start to think about it, you realize that the card is almost always a negative. You would have to like dark hole a full board of your opponent's cards, one of your guys, in order to get this card to work. It's a normal trap card, so it's a neg one inherently. You flip it, it goes to grave, you've lost a card. Another one of your cards on the field needed to be destroyed. So that's another card, that's neg two. So you lose one card, you use this one card, you gain two cards. At the very best, you're gaining a, a net of no advantage. Your opponent loses one card, they gain two. They've gone plus one. And I didn't even consider the fact that you used another card to play the dark hole. Oh, it's, so it's, actually, it's actually worse. Unless the card that was destroyed on your field is the card doing the destruction like Black Rose Dragon. Yeah, it actually gets worse the more you think about it. Oh. Now here's a card that I actually think I missed on the worst of the of the set uh, list when it came out, which is unfortunate because it's actually quite poor. It's actually quite poor. Sextit Summon. Ooh, sounds exciting. But no, it's bad. Sextet Summon is a normal spell card with the following effect. Are you ready for this? Banish from your hand, graveyard, or face up on your field. Oh boy. Six monsters. <laughs> what? Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, Ixi, Pendulum, Link. One of each. What? One of each. Special summon a monster from your... To special summon one guy from your deck or extra deck. You can only activate one of these per turn. <laughs> Like you would ever have the resources to activate more than one. Whoa, okay, you guys want the really, really worst part about this card? All those guys you banished have to be the same original type. And the guy you're summoning has to be the same type as the original type of all those banished. What? What deck? The only deck I can possibly think that could ever even attempt to play this card is like DDDs, right? Like I think DDDs have monsters of all of these except Ritual. And maybe Pendulum Odd Eyes could do it too? And they actually have a Ritual? You DDD players or Pendulum players, please tell me exactly in a uh, 200 words or less why that would be literally the stupidest tech choice you could possibly come up with. <laughs> I guess you could explain it better than me because the only thing I can say is that'll never happen though and even if you set it up it's a bad play. Best case scenario is you had a board of just like the rainbow of different colored monsters and you lost it all and uh, you want to get just a free guy. It's like, it's a terrible recovery move. It's a one for one. It's a one for one. This card is so hilariously impossible to activate. But when it does dough, it doesn't even ignore the summoning condition of the monster. So it's like, really? You couldn't even give me that? Number two, these cards are freaking terrible. Kind of making me lose my mind. Hypernova Burst. Banish face down. Oh god, that's cost. Oh, oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, yeah. From your hand or face up on your field. Oh, oh no. Two monsters that cannot be normal summoned. What, what? Draw two cards. You can only activate one of these per turn. What is with this hard once per turn on cards that has such steep cost, you couldn't conceivably ever even use more than one. And in the situations you could, it would be so rare that they are, they are not worth this kind of ridiculousness. I hate to break it to you, guys playing semi nami monster turbo where all your deck is nothing but a, a wild monster up here targets. This card is not good. And its best function is uh, rituals, I suppose? You don't want to do that. Ritual decks need to have a spell, a ritual monster, and tribute material in order to perform a ritual summon. So banishing two of your ritual monsters to draw two rando cards is taking away half, like a third of your three card combos that are required to ritual summon. So you're gonna get rid of all your monsters, draw all your ritual spells, and then you're just as bricked as you were before. And with the incantations, like you don't need a cruddy draw card like this. <laughs> this is the worst Necroz tech ever. It's, it's hysterically bad. And the fact that you're banishing those cards face down means they're pretty much out of the game. Look, those things are out of the game. This card stinks. How could there possibly be something worse than this? 
Oh no, there actually is. But before we get to number one, I do have an honorable mention. The Star Staring Starling! Yay, the level berries are back! I love the level berries. They are so weird. The worst Yu-Gi-Oh! cereal ever. Level berries, part of this balanced meta breakfast. But the card's artwork is so cute and its effect is okay. So it's bad, it's bad. But uh, I can see it being dual links-ish, maybe, even though it would only be able to get part of its effect. Basically, depending on what column it is in, it, it, is in, it, it modulates its level. So, and it's level four, so you can just put it on the board and then like put it wherever and it'll modulate its level. That's at least a neat concept. It's not very good and it has almost no function outside of a XC spam or synchro spam deck, but, and there's better options most likely. However, that don't blow your normal summon. However, it has a function. So I felt honorable mention is probably its, its best home, even though it's, it's not great. Plus the level berries, I love them. I don't know why, it's such a weird thing. Davinator122 is sponsored by MetaMat. If you guys want a custom cloth playmat, use the code TROLLTHEMETA to get 10% off your purchase. Also, TCG Player. If you want some of these awful, terrible cards, click the link in the description below and you can waste your money. Or, I don't know, go to their website and buy good cards. It helps the channel and it's not a waste. So do that. Also, buy viewers like you. Like, comment, and please subscribe if you're new to the channel. There's also a Discord in the description, which is where uh, all these lists are made. You guys make them, not me. I'm just the messenger. So if you guys think I missed cards or you want to be in part of that process, join the old D... C... Dis the D. Join the D. Hop on the D. <laughs> All right, number one, worst card 2019, go. Gold Moon Coin. Oh, oh God. It's just the last card, but somehow worse. Instead of banishing those two monsters of a very specific card type. Nah, let's give two cards to your opponent. Oh. Add two cards from your hand to your opponent's hand, then draw two cards. You can only activate one of these once per turn. Um, okay. The amount of card advantage you're losing to this is ridiculous. Just looking at your own card advantage, it's a neg one. But if you're looking at like both players' card advantage in reference to each other, it's a neg three. Because your opponent's getting two free cards and they didn't even have to do anything. Okay, and I know there's people clacking away, but what if you give them something they can't use? Well, you could probably use it because if it's in your deck and you can't use it, then you're running Garnets that don't even have functions and that's bad deck building and that's on you. And uh, so you're purposely crippling yourself to give your opponent a broken dead card they can't use that they're just gonna s discard for Nightmare Phoenix anyway. So thanks for taking that uh, decision making away from them uh, and made it easy for them to pop your stuff. And like the kind of decks you would run this in are such cheese balls, it's not even funny. And the other half of you clacking away down there, I know the card Relay Soul exists. And if you think that's a viable strategy with this card or cards like it, you don't know how the game works. Giving your opponent Relay Soul, which is like the only card in the game that has a lose condition attached to it. Your opponent has no incentive to set Relay Soul. You give them a Relay Soul, they're going to keep it in their hand and they're never going to put it on the board because anyone who knows anything knows that if you set the Relay Soul, even if you have no intention on activating it, your opponent has Bait Doll in their deck because they're playing a cheese ball strategy that's going to force you to activate the Relay Soul. They're going to pop the Relay Soul with something like MST and claim a victory. So uh, everyone knows that. It's not going to work. You might beat up an eight-year-old on the playground with this stupid strategy. <laughs> it makes you feel like a big man because the kid's not going to read his Relay Soul and, and understand that no player that knows how the game works would ever put that down. They have no incentive to do so. This card is so wild. I kind of like the artwork though. It looks very much like an anime card. I think it is, isn't it? Okay, um, I need to go uh, play Keyforge or something to get bad Yu-Gi-Oh cards off my mind because I don't even think I can duel now. It kind of mushed my brain up into, into soup. So uh, if you guys like the list, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you are not already subscribed, do so, because that's the only way you're gonna get the next list, which is the top 10 best cards of 2019, which I'm actually excited about because I don't, I like good cards. <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. Remember, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time.
<laughs> hey losers, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Wanna watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.